So on today's video, we're going to be uh, tackling the cylinder on the large wobbler engine. And I've got two pieces of metal here, and I'm not going to, I'm going to use one rather than the other. This one's a nice piece of cast, and I'm going to keep that for another engine build. I want to start making some internal combustion engines on this channel. And this one here is just a bit of a free machine grade. It could be bright mild, I'm not sure, but I think we purchased free machine grade for this project. And so what we need to do to make this cylinder today is obviously get it in the Colchester lathe. Uh, we need to face one side perfectly uh, flat, center drill, drill, and run a large drill bit up in here. You'll notice it's a blind hole, it's not a through hole, and it's roughly about 76 millimeters deep. And then we want to machine that out to, now I'll probably run a little boring bar up there if I've got one to fit or a bit of high speed steel and actually get that right on 90 millimeters. I don't have a three quarter inch drill bit. Now at the high school where I teach, we actually drill these undersize and ream them uh, with a Sutton reamer to 90 millimeters on the money. All right, now I don't have a ream at home. Well, it's probably hard for you to believe this, but I found this old Sutton drill bit in the coolant tank of my lathe when I was uh, doing the uh, Dulux restoration, and it was covered in rubbish and crap. Uh, I've just given it a bit of a sharpen now on the point, and let's go. Let's try this and just see how well it drills. Okay.
Right, -o, so I'll grab my um, telescopic gauge here and I'll just make sure it's fully extended. This is a 19mm one. Uh, now I can't get the next size in there, unfortunately, so I need to try this one. And uh, I'm shooting for 19mm. However, if I'm a little bit oversized, that's fine because the plan called for 19.05. So you saw me just bore that out before. So here we go with the telescopic gauge and we'll sweep that through the arc. Okay, and I'll throw this on my my chromator, and we're at 19.07. It looks like I've finished boring out the cylinder. Uh, what I'm going to do now, I've actually put a live center up the end of the cylinder, and I'm just going to try and take an OD cut here on that outside diameter. Now the plan calls it to be about 38 something. Um, I'm not going to worry about that, I'm probably going to aim for about 40. A little bit bigger is better, and that'll give you more meat where the pivot bolt goes through. So let's take a cut. Now I need to be careful here because I'm going to be machining up very close to that chuck and I'm going to make sure I don't hit it, otherwise I'll smash that carbide too. finished OD turning, um, I've marked where I need to part it off at. Uh, I'm just going to drop in here with a high speed steel parting tool and just take off about 10 millimetres off the end. Remove the cylinder from the lathe and installed it in the vise on a couple of parallels. In the plan here you can see that there needs to be a flat machined on the surface here and the, and the pivot hole and the port hole drilled. So to work that out the original diameter is 38.1 and the flat from the height of the flat is 33.25. So simple subtraction and I'm going to take off 4.85. Now, because my diameter is a little bit bigger, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to split the difference and go straight to 5mm depth of cut. Uh, but I'll probably sneak up on that depth of cut, actually. It probably won't be one pass. I've got my cigarette paper here, and I'm just going to uh, set my cutter. I'll set my dial wheel now to zero on the knee, on the Z height. Now, before I start taking any cuts, I've got to ensure that the quill is fully tight. Okay and the quill was actually loose, so that's a, a trap for young players. And you can see my paper is just touching there. I can back that off. Now, I could have positioned this in the X-axis uh, and clamp, clamped up on it. Now, that, that could have worked, but I'm always worried about it popping out of the vise. So 
I decided to clamp it this way and uh, we'll do the cut in the Y. So just a one mil depth of cut. It might go to two and a half actually, that's eating that like butter. Now this is a solid carbide um, tool from Iscar and uh, it's got a coating on it as well. So let's just take another cut at that. Now I'm climb milling at the moment but it's not that dangerous, it's uh, doing it quite easily. definitely likes the climb cutting better, doesn't it? Although it's, uh, it's not advised to climb cut on a manual machine unless you've got your gibs really done up tight. Alright, so it's now time to mark the location and drill those holes. I've placed the vertex edge finder in the collet chuck and installed it in the milling machine. If I rotate it, it rotates with very, very little run out down on the ball. I'll come in now and touch off on the side. Now that that's set, I'll clear my, my X axis and then reposition it to the zero. As the ball is 10mm diameter, I'll have to go in 5mm to get the radius. I've set my X dial to, to the zero. Now I'm going to touch off on the inside of this vice drill. Now the reason I'm doing that is because the datum point is from this corner of the cylinder. So there's my 5mm in Y. And there's my 5mm in X, and I should be right on that corner now. So as you know I touched off on that back corner here, uh, that is the datum, I came in as my diameter changed from the original one, I made mine 40 so I had to come in halfway which was 20. I then came up from that datum point edge, 44.5, you see me sink that 8mm uh, hole. Uh, I, I've deviated from the plan, I was going to drill and tap that but we have been having success by using just red Loctite and Loctiting it in, um, it's just a pivot, a pivot location. Now I've come up 67.47 to pop in there and drill that hole and I know I'm on my mark. I don't have a DRO on this milling machine so I'm relying off the dials. So I always mark my work first just to make sure that I'm on the right path when I, uh, when I move the dials and make sure I'm in the right location before I drill. And we're through. Now that was the um, the inlet port. Well, it's, it acts as both the inlet and the exhaust port. And this part's finished. We'll go back to the bench and have a look. Uh, last week you watched me machine the upright for the little wobbler or the large wobbler steam engine. Um, off camera, I attacked this with a file, with a lathe file, and just did some gentle cross filing. And you can see I've got it 
pretty much well in line here. I've got some cigarette paper packed up under the model. And if I just sweep across the top here very delicately, you can see I'm getting a movement of about 0.03 of a millimetre, so three tenths there. So I'm quite happy with that. Now if you take into regards it's going to be moving roughly from there to there, it's not too bad, it's not too shabby. So I could probably work at that a little bit more with some sandpaper and uh, on my surface plate here and get that uh, with spec, but I'll give that a try and see how we go. Well that concludes today's video on the cylinder build for the large wobbly engine. Um, I'm quite happy with the overall finish of everything. It's uh, all been manually machined, no CNC. Now a lot of you probably follow me on my other channel, the DCT one, and where I predominantly show a lot of CAD CAM and CNC. However, it's really nice to get back to your roots and start manual machining and turning dials and turning wheels manually. And it sort of, um, sort of feels like being one with material. So there it is. It's uh, ready to go. You can see where it pivots. And like I said, I'll lock tight that pivot bolt into position. And um, I know the hole lines up the, because I can feel the drill bit pop in there and hold it in situ so I know the port is in line. Now, if you want to make this yourself, remember the plans are free to download in the description area of the video. And uh, if you need uh, material, I suggest you reach out to Man Cave Metal Supplies in Melbourne. In, well, they're actually in Victoria. I'm not sure if they're based in Melbourne exactly. And uh, Glenn's the owner and he sells one-off pieces. You don't have to buy full length and it's really handy for the hobbyists, okay? I did want to do the piston today, but I'm glad I didn't machine the piston. I really needed to machine this cylinder here because the cylinder diameter will dictate the piston OD diameter. So this internal diameter here will dictate the piston diameter, which we're going to machine in brass later on. All right, so the piston will be next week. I'm sorry, I had to swap a few things around. See you back here next week. Uh, same time, same channel. Bye-bye. Push the button, darling. Yay, you start the big machine. Come over here, we'll start the machine. You ready? Come pull the lever with pop. Ready, hold the lever, pull him down. Oh, there we go. Push the red button, we turn him off. Push that button, turn it off, go. Harder, push it hard. Push it hard, hubby. Here, kick that one, kick it, kick it. Hey, good girl.